Welcome to Unfiltered, powered by PointsBet. I'm David Kaplan. On the heels of fans naming him the top running back in the league last week, Khalil Herbert comes on the show with us to talk ball and how the team is getting ready for the New York Giants. Plus, Dave wants that shares how the Bears can stop Saquon Barkley and why he thinks Justin Fields is about to air it out. And though Jason Hayward's time with the Cubs is coming to an end, his baseball career isn't over. He talks about his future and his past. It's unfiltered. It's powered by PointsBet. And it starts right now. Here are tonight's top stories. are brought to you by Four Seasons, heating, air conditioning, plumbing, and electric. The White Sox finally win a baseball game. They beat the Twins 4-3 and snap an eight-game skid off to San Diego tomorrow before one final homestand against Minnesota. Aaron Judge gets a chance to recharge as he stares down MLB history. He tied the American League home run record last night in Toronto. He'll get the chance to break it at home tomorrow. And quarterbacks dominated the first month of the NFL, none better than Lamar Jackson and Jalen Hurts, the two were named Players of the Month for September. Fresh off being named the FedEx Ground Player of the Week in the NFL, we welcome Bears running back Khalil Herbert into Cap Corner, brought to you by Great Clips. First of all, Khalil, congratulations. You know, you work so hard from playing peewee football, get to high school, get to college, get drafted, and here you get this opportunity and you deliver. Congrats. How did it feel? Thank you. Um, you know, I felt amazing just being able to go out there and, and help my team win, um, do anything I can, you know, when my, my number's called and the opportunity presents and stuff, uh, just to be able to step up and help my team out. So it felt amazing. In terms of being ready, it was obvious you were ready. David's in there, and all of a sudden, David's down. Khalil, you're up. Let's go. What is that moment like, how you gather yourself, and now it's about being focused? What is that like? Well, I think it really goes back to the week, um, just the, the preparation throughout the week, um, you know, getting myself ready because you never know when your number is going to be called, um, and just being ready for every opportunity that presents itself. Um, and that, that mindset, I think, helped me last year, and it's the same thing I, I went into this year with. So just having that mindset, I feel like, uh, throughout the week prepares me so when I get in the game, it's um, it's second nature. Your offensive line can, comes into the season, and a lot of people are saying, I don't know about that offensive line. And then you run for a buck 57. Team runs for 180 and then 280. I mean, like crazy numbers. Can you please give us some insight into the blocking that you are getting? Um, I can't give kudos enough to those guys. Uh, just the work they put in, the work they put in since April, um, you know, it's, you see it paying off dividends, um, but they do a great job up front. You know, we got a great fullback, a great line, a great O-line coach, and the stuff that we scheme up and the stuff that they come up with each week, uh, you know, just puts us in a position to be successful. So uh, they're doing a great job. Take me back to the goal line because at Green Bay, it was like a national story. Why are the Bears in the shotgun and then, Komet gets pushed into a pulling guard, and Justin doesn't get in. Did he? We don't know. They call it no touchdown. Last week, I see Justin under center, which I prefer. I'm more old school. I see an extra O-lineman, two tight ends, a fullback, and there's Khalil Herbert in the end zone. Take me back to that play and that moment and describe it for us. Um, You know, it's just something we, we worked on for them, Um, you know, but – just the whole line again, they getting a big push. You know, all the Texans defenders are are in are in the end zone. So it makes it real easy for me uh just to push my legs and get in. But um, you know, it's just stuff we worked on, we learned and we still a work in progress. And you know, you, you see we took the things from the Green Bay game and came back this week and changed it. Um so we just a work in progress and we continuing uh to try and get better. So a question I like to ask Bears players, whose locker room is it? Back in the day, we would say it's Olin Krutz or it's Brian Erlacher. When you walk into that room, who is the veteran guy? Maybe it's a young guy, but who's the guy? It's his locker room, man. That guy runs it. He's our leader. Um, I'd say between Roe and uh, Rob. Just, you know, they always have music on. It's always a good vibe when we get in the locker room. Um, early in the morning, you know, they'll come in playing some slow jams or something like that. Just, just get everybody in a good headspace to start the day. Um, so I'd say one of them, too. 
when they make a coaching change, what is that like from a player's perspective? Everything changes. Your position coach changes. Your general manager changes. The way you play, the way you pre- – everything changes. Can you describe the changeover and how it affected you? Um, I mean, it was a big change, especially, you know, from year one to year two. But um, throughout college, I had a lot of different coaches. and a lot, I was in a lot of different systems. So for me personally, you know, I'm kind of used to being, in, being – seeing new people and new faces – uh, so it wasn't that big of a, uh, of a jump for me, and I was only here for a year. So uh, for some other guys, it was different, but me personally, it wasn't it wasn't too big of a change. Justin is exceptionally honest. We run his press conference every Sunday after our post game show that I host, and there's the coach. And now let's go to Justin, and he stands up there and says, "I played like trash." When you hear a teammate be that honest, and you watch him play, and you know how hard he works. What is your mindset as a teammate? Um, I mean, you, you first things first, you got to be honest with yourself. You know, he was that. Um, but the thing I know about him is that, you know, he, he said that and he's going to do everything in his power to never feel like that or have to say that again. Um, so that's just, you know, how we feel in this in this, in this building and, you know, how I know him from since I've got here. Um, but just, you know, the brutally honestness, he's going to be honest with himself and he's going to hold himself to that high standard. Um, and, you know, he's going to do everything in his power to never let that happen again. Can you compare being a running back or a lineman or a cornerback? Yes, you get scrutinized because you're playing in an amazing sports city where the Bears are at the top of the mountain. But to be the quarterback, whether your name's Mitchell Trubisky or Jim McMahon or now Justin Fields, that's got to be at a whole different level, the scrutiny that he gets, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, whether it's good or bad, indifferent you know he definitely has to carry it all and you know I feel like he does a great great job just you know carrying it all um you know it's a lot to bear for what is he 22 years old and he does a great job of handling it all so you know kudos to him what is it like to get the phone call or maybe it was Brandon Faber or somebody in PR says hey Khalil great game you're the FedEx ground player of the week in the entire league that's pretty cool yeah no it was it was cool just you know um, my family and friends texted me and shouted me out. So it was, it was just cool to just make them proud. And, you know, my teammates coming up to me saying congrats. So, so you know, it's really cool to see your family, your teammates, and, you know, everybody that you work with and that you've been with, uh, you know, be proud of you. Have you thought back to your time? You're a 10, 11-year-old young man. You're trying to think, can I make it in this sport? Can I get to the high school team? And can I get to college? And here you are an elite running back in the National Football League. Do you think back on those days and how hard you worked to be here in this moment? Uh, definitely. Um, you know, just, you know, when things get hard, when my body's hurting and, you know, I'm tired of practice and stuff like that, I think back to that little kid that, you know, would give anything to work to be in this position. Um, and that makes me just go harder. But I definitely always think about it because, you know, um, when I was that age, I wasn't the, the most athletic, the, the biggest, the strongest. So, just the work I had to put in to be where I am today, you know, uh, definitely helps. So when you wake up on Monday morning and you've run for 157, but you take some big time hits, how does the body feel? And what is your regimen like so that when Sunday rolls around in New York, you're the best back on the field again? Um, You know, my body feels really banged up, really sore. Um, But, you know, usually I'll I'll get in, uh, get some soft tissue, you done in the morning getting the tubs contrast hot cold tub um you know we'll have some meetings we'll go through everything lift um and then i'll get on the, the treadmill to kind of just jog just flush my legs out um get some soft tissue and get a massage and then you know uh depending on how i feel tuesday uh, i'll do some extra stuff or just rest how did you celebrate on sunday night i mean it's tough to win football games let alone run for a buck 57 special meal is there something you do a tradition <laughs> no, I don't do anything after games. I go home, um, you know, I hang out with my girlfriend and my dog. My, my family was all up here last weekend, so it was fun to just have everybody home. We went out to go eat. Um, but, you know, that's pretty much the gist of it. I just go home and relax. I don't recover. All right, final thing. Give me your thoughts on the Giants. You're going to face off against the guy who was the second pick in the draft, Saquon Barkley. He's off to a great start. Tell me about that matchup, the keys to it. Um, about Saquon or, or the Giants? About defense? the Giants team. 
Um, really just, you know, their team in general, you know, they got a new coach, but he's definitely playing them and coaching them to, to play hard. Uh, but just their defense in general, they got a really good D-line, a really good uh, set of backers in secondary, so they're really athletic in the back end, um, you know. But, you know, we're going to try and do what we do. I know they're going to try and run the ball too, so it's going to be a challenge up front. Um, and it's whoever, whoever can win up front, I feel like we'll have a good chance of winning the game. Any thoughts on Saquon? Because when he came out of college, you don't see many running backs in today's game going second overall. Your thoughts on him? Uh, no, he's just a great back. Uh, you know, I watched him when I was in high school and in college. Um, just the things he do, he did, you know, and he's still able to do it, you know, it makes you go, uh, makes your eyes open up and, you know, they're, they're wild plays. So, you know, it'll be great to just be able to see him on the other side and play against them. Um, but, you know, he's definitely one of those backs that, you know, top, top backs in the league. Khalil, best of luck against the Giants. And thanks for joining us here on Unfiltered. We appreciate it. Thanks. Herbert's start to this season is our Saturday, courtesy of our great partners at Ankin Law. 312, 6 million for Howard. Put him in your phone. Right now, he's seventh in the league in rushing yards, just behind Christian McCaffrey and Lamar Jackson. And he's doing it on far fewer carries. He's run the ball 33 times, half as many as Nick Chubb and Jonathan Taylor, but he's getting more yards every time he totes the rock. It's seven yards per carry, second in the National Football League among running backs. Time for our first time out here on a filter. The coach is with us when we get back. Our guy, Wani, why he thinks Justin Fields is about to let it rip, why the Bears might not even have to stop Saquon Barkley to leave the Meadowlands victorious. Bank of America Chicago Marathon, Sunday, October 9th on NBC5. Welcome back on Unfiltered. I'm with my guy, Coach Watts. That Okay, I'm very concerned about this game because I think Daniel Jones is playing decent football, way better than Justin's playing, who I can't believe how he is struggling. And I'm concerned Brian Dayball is going to go 14 carries to Saquon. I might make that 28 this week. What do you well, th that would be the biggest concern that I would have. But they didn't do it the week before that, and they they won. Uh, so they're not – whether they're trying to pace Saquon Barkley or what the reason is, I don't know. But uh, 
you know, uh, if they have the same game plan, I like the Bears a lot in this game. I, I just think now two things I think will happen. One, hey, right now the Bears are one of the two best rushing teams in the entire NFL. So if you're the Giants, you're going to be defending that run heavily, heavily with everybody you got, and there's going to be some great opportunities. This is going to be the week that Justin Fields hits some big pass plays. I'm saying it right now. I just feel it. And the other side of the coin, if you saw Dallas, the difference between Dallas's defense and the Bears' defense, Dallas pressured almost 50% of the times. You know, they they hit Daniel Jones, the Giants quarterback, 20 times. 25 times. 25 times. So if I'm Matt Eberflus, because our corners, if Jalen Johnson comes back and plays, our corners can match up well against these Giant receivers. This would be a game that I would get Roquan heavily involved in the pressure game. And I, I think this is a game where you could pressure for one reason, because you got the coverage guys on the outside to match up with their receivers. What concerns you about the Giants' defense against Justin? Not, I mean, they're a solid defense. If you look at their numbers and what they've done so far, they've played solid against the run, solid against the pass, nothing exceptional. Best thing they've done is play good red zone defense. That's why they won those first couple games early. It's because they they played well down in the red zone. But uh, uh, there's there's nothing there that, to me, makes me jump up out of my chair. So if you were coaching this team, you look at the next four games, you've got the Giants, you've got the Commanders, you've got the Patriots, and the Vikings. Mm -hmm. None of those are juggernauts. None of them. you got a chance. But we got to build – Right now, there, there's a lot of energy and positive because we've got a couple wins under our belt. But we got to—I don't—we're we're not to the point yet where we're very—I don't—I don't think a confident team. Justin Fields goes out there and hits some passes to complement this run. This will do. This will be a big-time deal as far as a shot in the arm, momentum-wise, emotional-wise for our football team. So Justin said he went to see the mental skills coach and. You pulled the all 22 on. I have it on my desktop over there. And you look, you go, well, that guy's open and he didn't throw it. That guy's open waving his arms and he didn't throw. Yeah. How do you coach that when he's – it's not like he's making bad throws. He's not pulling the trigger. Yeah, I, you know, you, you just got to show him the film. And he's got to be so confident on those plays going into a game. And they can't cut it back anymore. They got to start adding to this thing because the competitions, you know, the defenses are going to catch up to this running game a little bit. It might be this week. And we're going to have to throw it to win. And you just got to hope that the plays that you're calling are the ones you worked in practice or the ones he's seen on tape and the ones that he's really confident in making. Well, I'm concerned that Daniel Jones' legs could cause us a problem. It could. He's a good enough athlete, but he's no better athlete than Justin Fields. Maybe this is the week where we get a little bit more quarterback run. By he's what, in year four? Yeah. A little more comfortable. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Uh, he's playing for his job. I mean, everybody plays for their job, but this guy, new regime, year four, it's either now or, or I'm gone. You know, so he knows that. So uh, that can be good for the Bears. A lot of pressure this week on him. Okay, I watched the Dallas Giants game. Yep. And I'm looking at it going, boy, Cooper Rush is playing really good football. Really good. So why pay Dak Prescott a billion dollars when late. I don't think I'm any better with Dak than I am with Cooper Rush? Too late now. Too <laughs> He's yeah. already cashed the check. But the thing that they're doing with Cooper Rush, I think, which is a great job, they're running the ball, they're balanced. The ball is coming out in like two seconds. I mean, the, the, he, I don't know if he's been sacked one time, maybe, in the two starts, but they're putting in high percentage throws, and the ball is coming out right now. So give those coaches some credit down there at Dallas that they're putting game plans together that give him – he's got to do it, but they're giving him a chance to be successful. Okay, in addition, the pro football focus numbers and the next-gen ESPN stats say Justin is getting 3.25 seconds on average in the pocket and he's not making plays. Is that more concerning, or are those stats sometimes skewed? I, I don't know much about those stats, but if it's even close, he's holding the ball way too long. You know, I mean, I, I always thought that – I always told our quarterbacks, we've got to get rid of that ball in 2.5 seconds. 
You know, otherwise we are going to get sacked and hit in the mouth. And uh, so if he's holding the ball that long, he definitely should be completing some big balls. You know, that's the first thought. Or, hey, you know what? Make make a little quicker decisions and get that ball out. The Giants are a three and a half point favorite right now today. Yeah. It was three. It went up to three and a yeah. half. They're at home, right? I mean, and you're taking the points with the Bears. I'm taking the Bears. Absolutely. I, I, I just feel good about this one. I really do. What's the matter? You're frowning over. You're I'm making on, all those. Faces. I'm on the other side. Okay. I feel like 24 10, 24 13. Oh, Giants the Giants. How the Giants, they can't, they aren't going to score 24 points. Are you kidding me? How? Saquon, going to give it to him 30 times. He might. You know what? You give it them 30 times, he might. And then I'll stand here and say, you know, that's – but they haven't done it yet. No, they have they not They haven't proven. done it yet. He has been unwilling, not Saquon, the coach, to hand the ball off that many times. Absolutely. Yep. Cost- if you were back coaching, you would have been like, oh. you're getting 35 carries. Coach, please. 14 the whole game. We've been 14. I, I gave it to Ricky Williams 14 on one series. <laughs> Please. Is that the one when they wanted you to throw and you went, no. I said, I've seen enough of this. One guy gets the ball. We he went it up. length of the field. Score. Touchdown. Touchdown. De- Miami wins. Miami beats Buffalo at home. Sunday night football. Bang. How about that? Yeah. I got to go pull that tape up. Coach, have a great day. All right, Captain. All right, our tip of the cap today are those odds from points bet. Giants are the favorites at minus three. Some places it's already bloated up to minus three and a half. Over under is 39 and a half. Money line has the Bears plus 135. Surprisingly low. Giants to lay it minus 160. Transformation is done. All right, one last time out here on Unfiltered. Jason Hayward's past and future may actually be in Chicago. I'll cap it off on Jay Hay after the break. Oof. Um, a lot of history being broken, um, a lot of winning, but I think having new understanding for what winning is. And I take away from that winning is a debt that it's not pretty. You have to give up a lot of things um, on and off the field, whatever it is, whatever your craft is. And, and there are a lot of things you have to give up as an individual and as a group. And we were able to pull off a lot of special things together and we did a lot of winning. And I think now what we're seeing coming to the end of that is, you know, some some of the debts you have to give back, the things you give up. And 
you know, the business is the business side of of this game and and in every industry. But what a ride for uh, for the city, for this fan base, and you know the love that I received, the love that we received, the guys that were part of those groups is never taken for granted. And we're so happy that I think I speak for everybody. We're so happy we could be a part of that group that that brought them to the other side of that. All right, time to cap it off. Presented by Chevy Drive Chicago. All right, are you one of those people sitting at home going, I can't believe we paid that guy that much money. He wasn't that good. Stop yourself. Number one, it's not your damn money. So why do you care what they paid him? A. B. Multiple players, including Anthony Rizzo, who was basically the face of that team that won in 16, have said on the record, we don't win without that guy making the speech and the leadership that he showed throughout that World Series run. So again, why are you sitting at home begrudging because they paid that guy $184 million? If you take away Jason Hayward, I believe after talking to guys on that team, you take away a World Series championship. You cool with rolling the dice if you could roll the hands of time back and go, no, I'm not going to sign him because you may not get a ring. And for many Cup fans like me, the single greatest night of my sports life. Having my kids, having my wife, those are amazing. They're here. The Cubs ain't far behind, man. That's what it meant to so many of us who cried November the 2nd, 2016. So if that guy was essential, then I'm glad Jason Hayward did it with pride and wore the Chicago Cubs uniform. You don't agree? You're wrong. Take that. See you tomorrow.